The views expressed and the opinions given by the individual host and their guests do not necessarily reflect those of Para-X, its affiliates, or its sponsors. It's coming. All these voices. My name is James Hurst. Right back. Everyone and welcome to another episode of Staring into the Abyss. I am your host, horror author James Hershey Jr., and with me as always, my co-host, old boy James Ash. How you doing, brother? I'm doing pretty good. How's everybody doing tonight, guys? Tonight's episode is going to be a good one. This is one of those topics that is a real proving ground. If you want to know if someone really knows their stuff when it comes to the paranormal lore, simply ask them to tell you all about the Wraith. Now, the most common answer that you will receive is that a wraith is just another name for a ghost. If they really want to be fancy and show off, then they will tell you that the term comes from Scotland, and a wraith is simply what the Scottish people would call a ghost. Now, you may say, well, James, I knew that you were a genius, but I did not know that you were a psychic as well. Oh, dear listener, flattery will get you everywhere, but I assure you that I am not a psychic. The reason that I know what they're going to tell you is because that's what Wikipedia says about wraiths. Now that might be what Wikipedia knows about the wraith, but that is not all that is known about the wraith. On tonight's episode, I'm going to take you on a journey deep, 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 deep into the lore. They can only be found in a bunch of old dusty books and from actual field experience. Now right now I imagine the sound of screeching tires in your minds as you think, whoa, 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 hold on, wait up, just a damn minute. Did he actually say field experience? Is he saying that they have actually ran into one of these things? The answer to that, my friends, is absolutely, 100% yes. Later on in the show, Old Boy is going to tell you all about some investigations that we've been doing lately where he has come face to face with this nasty little booger on more than one occasion. Now that is for later, but first we need to dig into the lore and learn more about the Wraith. Now I've mentioned the Wikipedia version of the Wraith, and that is one type of Wraith, but there are several more. First, let's learn where wraiths come from. Wraiths are creatures that are created when something goes wrong in spellcasting. Now, more specifically, it is in necromancy when a witch or a wizard is either trying to extend their lifespan or they are trying to manipulate time in some way. The witch, if they are powerful enough, will get their wish. Kind of. They will become immortal and gain extraordinary power, but unfortunately the price that they pay for this is very, very steep. 
Their souls are taken away from them, and they are condemned to wander the earth for eternity between dimensions and never be able to reach the spirit realm. Now, being soulless creatures, wraiths are only capable of feeling very, very strong emotions like hatred, sadness, and despair, rage, that kind of thing. If you had to classify a wraith, first of all, it would not be easy to do, but it would fall somewhere between a ghost, a demon, and a flesh and blood monster. Now, I know that sounds very, very confusing, but don't worry. I'm going to explain it all to you. So there are two main forms of wraith. You have the spiritual form, and you have the physical form. The spiritual form is when the wraith is not inside of a human host, and it has the ability to drain the life out of and steal the soul of unsaved people with a single touch. Now, according to the lore, when a wraith steals a human soul, that human is forced to wander the earth with the wraith for all eternity. Now, all hope is not lost in this case because the only way to actually fix this is for the original wraith to be killed. So if you kill the wraith that stole your soul, or if somebody kills the wraith that stole your soul, you can get it back and you will be freed. Now, the good news is that these things can be killed. In their spiritual form, a wraith can be driven away with a holy object, and if you are able to corner the wraith so that it cannot escape, which I will admit is damn near impossible to do, because they can travel through matter in their spiritual form. But if by some miracle you are able to do so, they can be destroyed by inserting the holy object inside of them. In the wraith's physical form, it is much easier to kill. If the wraith has taken a physical form, you can hurt it with silver and kill it by stabbing it in the heart with a silver knife. Now, it is extremely important that if you attack a wraith, you finish it off. Because a wraith will hold a grudge and become extremely enraged that it was attacked. When it is enraged, a wraith will unleash its unholy wrath on anyone that is unlucky enough to wander into its path. The wraith can emit waves of psychic energy that can make you very, very sick. It can drain you of all of your energy so that you can barely stand and even attack your mind, taking away your will to live or trying to get you to attack other members of your group. So it forms a, a type of almost temporary insanity sometimes. Once you have crossed a wraith, it has been known to hunt that person that has enraged it until they are either best case scenario dead or worst case scenario, they steal your soul and force you to wander the earth forever. One type of wraith is like a parasitic demon that will hide out in any empty space until they find a human to possess. Unlike a normal demon, a wraith does not make its presence known right away to the human that it's possessed. In most cases, the possessed person never even knows that they have been possessed. The main purpose of the possession is to lie in wait until the human has a child. When the possessed person mates with another person, the wraith will bond with that unborn child. The soul of the child will meld with the wraith, creating what is called a blood child. Now in the meantime, while they're waiting for this child to be born, they will act just like a parasite. It will feed off of your life force, basically. And that is what sustains them. Another type of wraith is called a varor. Now, this was also known as a watcher or a warden. This type of wraith will follow the soul of a human from the day that you're born until the day that they die. Um, this is the only type of wraith that is not believed to be pure evil. It is not necessarily believed to be a good thing, but it's just kind of neutral. It just watches you. Now we'll go back to the most common type of wraith that I was speaking of earlier. When the spiritual type of wraith 
takes on a human form, it becomes a very different type of creature. But it still maintains some of its abilities from its spiritual form. It can still attack your mind and cause you to become ill, uh, hallucinate, it can make you mentally unbalanced. Now the reason that a wraith in physical form will try to attack the mind is to cause terror. And the reason that it wants you so scared is because that will cause your brain to become soaked in adrenaline and dopamine, which apparently the wraiths must find very, very tasty. Because wraiths in a physical form will feed on their victims' brains with long organic spikes that come out of their wrists. And they will suck out that fluid, and that's what feeds them. When it's in its physical form, the wraith will appear to be just like any other normal human. But there are ways that you can see its true form. The first of these is a mirror. A wraith's true form can be seen in its reflection. So whether that is actually a mirror or any other reflective surface such as a lake, water, river, whatever, anything that casts a reflection, you will be able to see the true form of the wraith in. Psychic mediums are also able to see a wraith's true form if they are powerful enough. So if you have a psychic medium that is very, very good at what they do and they're very powerful, they'll be able to see a wraith's true form as well. If the wraith's skin comes in contact with silver, it will sizzle and bubble. It hurts the wraith. I mentioned that earlier. So that is another way that you can see whether you're dealing with a normal human or whether you're dealing with a wraith in a physical form. And like I said earlier, if you stab it in the heart with a silver knife, you can kill the thing. Now, if you remember a long time ago, I did a show called The Strange Case of Black River Falls. On that episode, we spoke about a little town called Black River Falls where all kinds of insane stuff happened. You had a guy that dug a hole stuck his head in the hole with dynamite and blew himself up. You had people that set themselves on fire in their yard, doused themselves with kerosene and set themselves on fire. You had people walking out buck naked in the middle of winter. All kinds of weird, weird stuff was going on in that town. If you have not heard that episode, I definitely recommend it. Go to the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash James Hershey Jr., and look for that show. It was a really, really interesting case that actually happened. It's documented. And I believe that what was attacking that town was a wraith in its physical form. And I think that it might have even been the old woman that was breaking windows and stuff. That's a good possibility. But I believe that what was going on there was you had a wraith that was feeding on the people of that town and causing the insanity that was happening. So if you haven't listened to it, I definitely recommend it. Go check that out because it was a very, very, very good show. So we have cases where I believe that wraiths have attacked towns before. I would like to go over really quickly a couple very, very interesting things here. First, when a wraith possesses a person, when it takes on its human form through possession, it does not make its presence known to the person, but that does not mean that there is no side effect, so to speak, of being possessed by a wraith. As time goes on, the person that is possessed will start to develop like demonic strength. They'll be very, very strong, and they will also begin to develop a serious case of bloodlust. And when they fight, it will be almost like an animal. They will bite, they will scratch, they will kick, punch, do anything they can to destroy you, to kill you. Um, a good idea of what I'm talking about is if you look back in the Viking lore, the Norse lore, they had a thing called a berserker. And for those that don't know, basically what a berserker was, was somebody that went into battle and just went nuts. They would froth at the mouth, they would scream and howl, and 
they were almost unbeatable in battle. That is kind of what happens to a person if they have been possessed by a wraith for long enough. They develop a superhuman strength. They develop a, a horrible bloodlust. And they end up fighting and, and acting basically like a, a wild animal. The other thing I want to touch on briefly, I'm not going to get super deep into this, but I want to talk a little bit about the blood child because that is so, so interesting. Basically what happens is, like I was saying, when the human being mates with another human being and a child is produced, it's almost like there's a little baby wraith that's produced as well because part of that wraith's essence is transferred into that child. And that child actually bonds and melds with the wraith from the womb. So because it was there before it was even born, and it spends its entire life with this wraith, the child is a little bit different than a normal child, understandably. The way that manifests itself is they are usually distant from other people. They speak in a very strange way. Uh, the sentences that they speak often sound kind of odd. And they also seem to usually have a paler skin tone than other people. Some even very, very pale. And unlike normal people, their hair seems to have little or no color. It can range anywhere from like a pure white to a platinum blonde looking color. The blood children are also said to have the blood rage much more often and more severely than people who have only been possessed by a wraith. So if you are born with a wraith and you are a blood child, you have a much more severe case of the blood rage. And it also takes a lot less to bring that out in you. Because with a possessed person, the blood rage manifests itself in times of extreme stress or extreme emotional turmoil is when it'll, it'll come out. And it takes much, much less to bring that blood rage out of a blood child. They also possess much more powerful emotions than most people. And they become emotional about even the smallest things. And it seems to really, really affect them. So when you're talking like love, hate, that kind of thing, it really affects them. If they love you, they really, really love you. And if they hate you, they really hate you. And they want to rip you apart. Um, understandably, the, the rate of madness and insanity in these children is very, very high. Most of them die without ever knowing that they were part demon, basically, that they were a blood child. Now, the reason that this is so interesting to me is because we have linked the possession of a wraith to a blood rage and to berserkers. And I think that might be what caused some of these berserkers in Viking lore, might be because they were possessed by wraiths. What I wonder is these blood children, could it be that these sociopaths that we have in society. These people that are terrible serial killers, that have no emotion about it, they don't feel bad about it, and they'll just cut you to pieces. Could it be that some of these people, now I'm not saying all of them, but some of them might be blood children? To me, that just kind of makes sense. Because if you have somebody that is a sociopath, that's what the psychologist or the psychiatrist would say they are. That means that they have no real conscience. They don't have emotion about what they've done. They don't feel bad about it at all. Most of us have that little voice inside of us that tells us what we're doing is wrong, to not do that. But sociopaths do not possess that small voice. I wonder if some of those aren't blood children, because that would explain a whole lot. I will leave that up to you to make up your own mind about because I can't prove it one way or the other. As far as I know that there's no way to determine whether a person is a blood child or not. 
it's possible maybe you could see their true form in a reflection or maybe a psychic medium could pick up on it. That's probably more likely than a reflection thing. Because the reason the reflection thing works with a regular wraith is because you see the the duality there, the true nature of the creature that's possessing the human. It's something extra that's not supposed to be there. It's hitching a ride, so to speak. But with a blood child, that wraith is there from the time it's it's a little embryo. And it's growing right alongside with it, and it fuses into that person. So it becomes part of them. So I don't know if the reflection would work. But it's possible that a psychic medium, if they're strong enough, could pick up on whether or not a person is a blood child. That would be a very interesting experiment to see if we could figure that out. But I guess to do that, you'd have to gather up a bunch of really sick serial killer people and, and test them, I guess. But that's something at least to consider. So as you can see, there is a hell of a lot more to the Wraith than it just being the Scottish name for a ghost. And I teased earlier about actual field experience with these things. And I'm going to turn it over to Old Boy now and let him tell you about the recent investigations that he has been on where he has had to face off with the Wraith. And I'd also like to get his opinion on what he thinks of the whole blood child thing, if it might be that serial killers and sociopaths, some of them, might actually be blood children, that that's a way to explain that. And also about berserkers being possibly people that were possessed by wraiths. Thank you for uh, talking about the wraith because I've actually dealt with it, guys, and I'll talk about that in a minute. What he was pretty much saying about the different wraiths, there's actually... Another story I was telling him before that I've read about the Wraith. What I'm going to do is, it's pretty similar to what he was saying. It's people who use black magic can actually summon these things. What I read is what a Wraith is, they get a spirit and they take control of it. And basically turns like a phantom. That's why it kind of like has like a hood or, or a, a, a cloak. And they can control it. So what it does is it can attack you. For, your, for like he was saying, for your brain, your brain fluid, and it gets dopamine from it. So, it, but what it does, what I read, it doesn't possess you. It just wants to kill you. Not like a shadow person that wants to to torment you, or or demons want to possess you. Possess you, they want to t kill you. That's what they're sent for. So basically, what these things are getting sent to do is they're like a hitman, but they're spiritual. So what happens is you're getting somebody who's into black magic like a witch or somebody who's a, in necromancy or black magic or using the, the left side, how you guys, the, the Wiccan community would say. And what they're doing is they'll get this thing to go after you if you, you did them wrong or something. So they, they send this thing out to you and what it does is tries to kill you. And sometimes it happens because what it does is it goes after your brain fluid and it drains you to your dead. So that's what I read earlier, and I was talking to James about that. That's another theory or, uh, or another kind of wraith, I guess. They get them to go after people. So they'll c capture a spirit, and then after they're done, the spirit will go back to wherever it was came from and go on its way. But that's the way it does. It turns these spirits into, like, these super crazy creature uh, things that come after you. And, yes, you can hurt them with silver. But with these things, these are spiritual. so. Not all the time, uh, the religious thing's going to work. It matters if it's silver. If it's just regular, something like copper, something, it's not going to work. But if you use silver, it will work. And you could kill these things or send them back wherever they came. So other than that point, he's right about that. Some of these things are something you really don't want to mess with or have come after you. Because with, with me, what I was going to tell people about the Wraith and my experiences with it, because I'm going to get into that in a minute. This is something you don't want to mess with if you're just barely getting into investigating. And I've kind of explained this to somebody. This is something, if this thing's coming after you, there's got to be a reason. And it's not just lurking around. It, it, it could be, but majority of the time, there's something controlling it. Either you did something wrong to somebody or you pissed them off, the, the rave or something. And... What I've dealt with, and I'm going to get into this now because I was going to tell you guys about what my experience was when I've dealt with this thing twice now. I knew it was 
when I went to the, the cemetery, we were walking around and it was almost night. It was like a couple days before the 4th of July. There was actually people lighting off fireworks because I guess their loved one had passed away and he loved fireworks. So they were lighting it off by his grave and they, they hurried up and took off after that. Well, I could feel like I seen this dark area, and I could feel there was something there. And she, in the the medium was all, was there, was saying it was a gargoyle looking creature. I'm like, no, that's a wraith. She said, no, it was gargoyle. I'm like, it's a wraith. <laughs> Trust me. So we went down there, and first thing I took a picture. There it was, red red eyes. It was a wraith. It was watching me, and I had this weird smell of sulfur, like a weird weird smell. And it was like, as soon as I went down in this area, because there was like a, it was like a, a bell. There's a right in the middle. Like there's like a, it must be really expensive because whoever passed away paid a lot of money because it's like this big memorial and it has like a bell and it's really awesome. It's like in the middle of the of the, the grave site, and then there's a not a, a mausoleum on the side, and I get a weird feeling in this one room there. It's there. It's usually locked, but the other night, the second time we went, it was open. That's when we had a lot of problems with the wraith. The first time, I didn't feel sick, but I knew it was watching me the whole time. And when we did the spirit box, it even said it was a wraith. And it's, she, it was there, and it revealed itself as a wraith. And I didn't really see nothing. I seen things in the shadows, but it didn't reveal itself because there was 10, 11, 12 people there. So it's more people, it's not going to reveal itself. The less people, it will. And it will mess with this, the, the weakest person. And it was telling me that something was telling me that it's going after the weakest person. I told him who it was. And that whole time, it was telling, the, uh, I don't want to bring his name up, to attack me, to hit me. Like he was saying, it turn, turn your group against each other. It was trying to get the guy to hit me. And later on, it was trying to tell me to hit him and kill him. And I wasn't going to do that. And it also went after another one of our, our members and told him to kill himself and was making remarks. And we kept going back and forth. Then the second time I went, as soon as we started walking up there, I started getting a stomach ache. Everybody started getting a stomach ache, like a bad stomach ache. And it felt like I was getting sick. Like James was saying, it makes you feel sick. So as soon as we got there, there was probably, what, one, two, three, four, five, five or six of us. I think it was five or six of us. That was it this time. And it started attacking us. The The doors were open at the mausoleum, the mausoleum and you could smell like roses. It was a good sense, but it was, it was weird. It was open. It was supposed to be locked. So we started walking around the same place. I took pictures and I got two green. I even had the pictures. I showed them to James and he'll could put it on there for evidence later, but you'll see two green beings. And I, it was, it was weird. It, it was him. It's the wraith. I wouldn't say him or it. It was the wraith. And it was coming in like James was actually on video and he could see something watching me. And it was coming for me, but I had my pentagram silver. So I had silver on me. So it didn't really attack me. It just made me not feel good, but it also gave me bad thoughts. And it was giving him, Justin, the guy who were also with bad thoughts, that hit me and hit other people. Well, it couldn't get me or anybody else because Justin also had silver. It attacked one of the other people who didn't. And she got very ill, and it, like, knocked her on her feet. We had video of it, and you guys can check it out. I think it's on Staring into the Abyss. If not, it's on Sa Shadows Pit. You guys can go on there. We're, we're affiliated with them now, so you guys can check out both our show and them, too. And you could see that she was – I knew something was coming, and, and the psychic said, it's coming for us. It's coming for somebody, and she right. It happened. She called it and saw it. The psychic saw him because, like James said, a medium could see him. or uh, It's more of a medium. And saw the wraith and knew what it looked like. I saw a black shadow. That's all I saw. I think James saw it, too, because James was actually watching the video the second, the second time we went to go look for the wraith. But this time, the wraith was ready for us. I actually got the wraith on the spirit box to leave us alone. And he did for a while. But somebody, they kept challenging me. You're not supposed to challenge a wraith. He's not human. He was, he's like a, a phantom, kind of like a, a creature, but like in between, like James said, a demon ghost. I don't know if I would say human, but it's it's something you can stab with a silver knife, like you were saying. Uh, I wouldn't want it coming to my house because it can follow you. It can follow you guys. It's not like a ghost just can stay at a, you know, one, one place. It can move and it can go wherever it wants. And it can follow you. 
So that's why you got to be very careful because it can get you in your sleep. It can get you while you're in the shower. It doesn't have to wait when it's just around a group of people. It can come at, come at your house. It can follow you. And if somebody has it's coming after you, it could go anywhere. It can make it look like it is an accident, but really it was them sending them after you to kill you. He was talking about some of these killers, sociopaths. They could be waifs. Well, have waif blood in them, you would say, like he was saying. Um, that's a possibility because some of them just don't have any kind of conscience. But I don't know, I would say a lot of them because Jeffrey Dahmer knew what he did. I don't think he was. I Maybe the Zodiac Killer might have been. Uh, Charles Manson was just crazy. Robert R Robert Ramirez was involved in that kind of stuff, so that could be a possibility. But he was also messing around with demons, too. <sighs> Who else? Gacy? I don't know. Could have been. Could have been a possibility. Ed Gain? Probably. That's a possibility on that one. Ed Gain was a real weird person. That, that I could see a couple of these guys being part of that, that uh, bl uh, blood you were talking about. Uh, I would say Wraith blood or whatever. They're half, halflings. Halflings. I, I could see that. It's a possibility because some of them just were out there. Richard Ramirez was pretty out there. He was into Satan too, so that's a possibility. Or he was with the devil. One, he was either or. He did something. He wasn't just him. Um, I think that's a possibility. Though I think some things can be the wraith can be born in you, like he was talking, because I know demons can do it. A blood pass pack, and basically, it's like a halfling, and they don't even know about it. Most people don't know about it. That's but you'll notice some people just go off on it. You've seen people just flip out and beat the crap out of somebody, and like then they get lust for it, like crazy over it and keep wanting to do it. I've seen people do that before. I the lust for blood things kind of I never heard that one. That's new to me. Um, I believe it. That could be a real. That's that's really crazy because I never thought heard of that one before. That's a good uh, assessment on that one. I that's one thing I'm kind of. Oh, well, that's pretty crazy because it, it, it probably does lust for blood if it's half Rafe. Because Rafe, but what I was thinking is Rafe's only really go after brain, brain fluid, though. So maybe it's part of the human thing being half human. Maybe that's where they get the blood, blood lust from. That That's very interesting, though. I kind of never knew that. So that's good. That's something I didn't even know about a Rafe. But yes, I have dealt with the Rafe. It made me sick the second time, like a stomach. It was like, you know how you get like a stomach pain, but you feel like you're going to throw up, but you don't. It was like that. But then I would hear th voices in my head, and it was trying to mess with me, but it, I fought it off because I, I have a lot of power myself. But it started messing with other people, making them sick. It made our leader sick that was doing uh, what he, he felt he was going to throw up. He, everybody felt like their stomachs were killing them. And it, it was real weird, and I think that's the way it attacks you. So it gets the, the weakest link. So it attacked one of our late people and it dropped them to their knees. And it was very crazy to see something like that. Because, like, when you're looking around for this thing and it's hiding and jumping around and it just, I knew it was going to attack. I knew it was going to attack her. I just had a feeling because she was, she just, you know, she's not done a lot of this. So she doesn't, it, she's not used to protecting herself. Like James was saying, some of these people are just going for ghosts or demons, and they are got to realize it's not just that. There's other things. Shadow people, raves, phantoms, all kinds of demons. There's there's other things that can latch on. And it isn't just ghosts. Stuff you don't want following you. There's stuff I don't even know about. And in one theory, I was talking to James. We did a show about the demon truck, and I was saying that one of the, one of the things they seen was a lady with a cloak. That's what they say. It has a cloak, and it has, like, shiny eyes. Maybe that, that somebody was like a, a uh, necromancer was controlling this thing, and that's what it does. It changes. It can change because it says it can change into different things. So maybe that's what people are really seeing. It was a necromancer trying to get revenge on this town or trying to, uh, they was done wrong. So this is what it does. It goes after the people in this town. Or maybe one of those, because he always says over this hill, it, it, you know, the fifth hill, maybe somebody that got killed they loved, and that's why they're going back for revenge all the time to get, because. Somebody killed them on that road or were drunk or something which shouldn't have been on that road. And that was another theory we never thought about, James, on the devil truck. I hate to bring that up, but maybe it was somebody who was getting revenge for somebody who was killed on that road for some reason. Maybe for alcohol, they were drinking, they just killed their family members, and that's why they go after people for revenge. 
that was one theory we never even talked about. I just thought about that in my head while that just came out of nowhere. See what happens, guys? You do a show like this, you start thinking more, and things just come out of nowhere. But that's all I have to say about the Wraith. Um, but yes, most of the stuff James is talking about, that's kind of happened that night. It was really intense and probably one of the craziest things I've ever dealt with. But And it was not just one time, it was twice. And we're probably going to go back to that cemetery. But we'll probably go deal with him again because I'm not done with him. I want to, I want to get him. I want to take, get him out of that uh, uh, graveyard. He shouldn't be there. It seems like the stuff that you read is like a a hodgepodge, so to speak, of different lore. The the thing about a wraith being able to be controlled by a necromancer and actually sent on a hit, so to speak, is extremely interesting. And I don't see any reason why. That can't be true. I've never heard of it personally myself, but that does not mean that it's not true. It's very, very interesting. But it seems like some of it is, is kind of a little mixed up because, like, the thing about feeding on the brain fluid, that only occurs when the wraith has taken a physical body, has possessed a, a person, because that's where they get their organic spike that comes out of their wrist. In their spiritual form, they don't feed on the brain fluid, according to the lore. They will actually try to steal your soul and they can instantly kill you. They can still make you sick, still do all those things in both forms, but it's not until they take a human form that they actually feed on the brain fluid where before when they're in their spiritual form, they only steal the souls and cause you to die. But that's definitely one thing that old boy brought up is extremely important to, to reiterate and stress. And that is if you are doing the whole ghost hunting thing, okay, the paranormal investigating thing, where you're going in and you're helping people and you are doing EVP sessions and trying to contact spirits and all that kind of stuff. That can be a very noble calling, okay, that, that's a great thing. But be aware that there are a hell of a lot more things out there than just ghosts. And that's such a a good point to be made because a lot of people never talk about that they don't ever even consider that they're going to some of these locations and automatically you're thinking ghost or automatically worst case scenario they're thinking demon but people don't realize there are other things out there and when you go to this location or you go to try to help this family or whatever and you think that maybe you know you can easily figure it out it's just a ghost, no problem, it won't hurt you. That That's another thing that a lot of people say is most of the times they'll say that whatever it is won't hurt you. Well, that's not necessarily true because if it's one of these other things, such as a wraith or even a demonic presence, it absolutely can and will hurt you. I heard the other day somebody was talking about shadow people and they were saying that they are basically benevolent. They will not harm you no big deal don't worry about it they won't hurt you well that's just complete and utter bs i mean bottom line that's that's not true okay there are documented cases of shadow people stealing the breath from people sitting on your chest trying to give you a heart attack there's a case where shadow people were actually possessing human beings down at a river and making the people walk in and drown themselves there's a lot of a lot of cases of shadow people absolutely hurting people. Okay, so you got to be really careful with this stuff, guys. What happens is, you, have you ever heard that saying a little bit of knowledge is a dangerous thing? What that actually means is that you have somebody that has just a slight bit of knowledge. So they are familiar with a subject, but they don't know a great deal about that subject. They're just familiar with it. But then they start speaking on it, and giving advice to people on that subject when they don't really have the knowledge to be speaking on that subject. That happens a great deal, especially in the paranormal that happens a great deal because there's not a lot of people in the paranormal field that will actually do the research past looking at Wikipedia or past watching ghost adventures or something like that. There's not a lot of people that actually hit the libraries and hit the books and, and really learn this stuff. And there's even fewer people that have the actual real life experience of actually going out and confronting things and and fighting these things okay what you do have is a lot of people that have watched ghost adventures or 
have watched uh, Paranormal State or one of these shows. Okay, there's a bunch of different shows. They watched them on TV. They thought, oh, that's cool. I want to do that. So they went, they went online and they bought themselves a, a box or two or, or so a little bit of equipment. And all of a sudden they're ghost hunters. You know, they're paranormal investigators. When in all reality, they don't have any real experience or not a whole lot of knowledge. But the problem is they, they get online and they start talking to other people. And you'll have somebody that's actually having a problem in their home or something, and they're asking for advice. And then you have people that do not have the knowledge giving them advice, and they're giving them the wrong advice. Such as that case that I was speaking of where the guy was saying, don't worry about shadow people, they're not a problem at all, nothing to fear. Well, that's, that's not true, guys. You know, and anybody that has even a little bit of knowledge in the paranormal field or experience will tell you, shadow people are nothing to be played with. Okay, they're dangerous as hell. Now, there are a couple versions of shadow people that will not harm you. Okay, they'll just watch you. And then there's some that just kind of wander on through and don't pay no attention to you. And then there's some that love to be at tragedies and, and watch tragedies happen and hang around. But there's also demonic shadow people and there's also shadow people that are very, very violent and will absolutely hurt you. And there's also things like wraiths and and phantoms and ghouls and all kinds of stuff out there, guys, that, that exist and can and will kill you. And like I always love to say, they'll kill you bloody. Okay, I've, I've ran into some things out in the mountains sometimes that will turn your hair white. You know, me and old boy both have, have years and years and years of real world experience in this stuff. And I'm sure that, that he will tell you just as soon as I will tell you. And I've said it before on this show. And it's not just a catchphrase. I absolutely mean it. There are things that go bump in the night. They do exist. Now, polite society and most academic types will tell you that you're crazy. They'll tell you, oh, that's silly. That doesn't exist. But I guarantee you, they would be singing a different tune if they were the one at that cemetery that night confronting this thing. Because old boy did have a couple run-ins with a wraith. I've seen the wraith on the video. He saw it in person. These things exist. And if you do not believe that any of this stuff exists, then quite frankly, and I don't mean to hurt anybody's feelings here, but quite frankly, you're in the wrong line of work. If, if you're going to sit there and tell me that only ghosts exist, and you know this because you're a paranormal investigator, then you got no business being a paranormal investigator. And you definitely have no business trying to help people in their homes that are having problems with these kind of things. That would be like a doctor saying, only skin cancer exists. No other kinds of cancer exist. I don't care what the facts say. I don't care what the evidence says. I'm a doctor and I'm telling you, only skin cancer exists. Lung cancer doesn't exist. Bone cancer doesn't exist. None of those other things exist. Only skin cancer. That's, that's what we're doing here, guys. That's the same thing. So... The basic point is, be careful. If you're going to go out there and investigate, God bless you. You're doing a great thing to help a lot of people. That's wonderful. But arm yourself, man. You wouldn't go into battle without a weapon, would you? This is no different. Not everything you're going you're gonna to run into out there is going to be nice and polite and want to have a chat with you. If you spend any amount of time actually hunting these things, you'll find out very quickly that they're not all friendly. And sometimes you show up thinking it's one thing, and it's a whole different ball game once you get there. So that point I wanted to stress that Old Boy made is an extremely good point because you, you've just got to be so careful. Yeah, that's one thing I want to get that James is st and stress really easy. These things are not – you're not going to run into these things all the time. Me running into the Rafe, it was just there. I don't know why it's there. Maybe it's just lingers there to catch itself some, you know, capture a soul or whatever it's going to do or break, kill somebody, whatever, whatever it's going to catch and go after. Or maybe somebody's been sending it after this, this group. You never know. I would hardly doubt that, but that is a possibility we were talking about. Or this thing just doesn't like this group and because they've dealt with a wraith before I even started that was another thing, James. This this isn't the first time they've dealt with a wraith. 
they had dealt with it once other one or two other times with another guy. I don't know who he was, but they this isn't their first time. Oh, it was probably like their fourth or fifth time. So they deal with this Rafe every time they go to this cemetery. So this Rafe may have a vendetta against them, and now I got into it. And I don't have any problems because I know how to defend myself. And like I said, I'm different than James is, we belief wise. But you don't want to go in, like he said, a war without a gun. I mean, some people could say, oh, well, that, you know, what are you, what are you like in the military or something? No, it, it's a meaning is you're not going to go without weapons or something on there to protect you. I always go in with something to protect me. And sometimes I even have a weapon. But not for that. But yeah, I do have stuff to protect me. And if I was going to get it, you know, you never know what we're going to ever do. We, like I said, we down the road, we might be on a TV show. If we go after something that has nothing to do with shadow people or, or demons, say we were going after them, the dog man, uh, I don't think I'm going to be carrying just a phone and, and a flashlight. I'm probably going to have something on me. And so will James, because we're not stupid. You know, TV, whatever they do on TV, they make it look good. But, you know, I'm not I'm not trying to die, whatever we're going to go after. But you have to have stuff to protect you and you got to know what you're doing. And you have a lot of people who just see, watch Ghost Hunters, Ghost Adventures, and they watch, you know, whatever, a couple times. And then they go out and buy a little bit of equipment and they're out there like they're ghost hunters and they know what they're doing. That's not the smartest idea because you're bringing stuff back with you. You don't know what you're bringing. It may not just be a ghost. It could be a demon or a shadow person or a wraith or a ghoul, like James said, or it could be anything. There's, there's stuff that we don't even know about. Dark-eyed children, we don't know what they are. They could be a different kind of shadow person. We don't know what these things are. We just, I mean, I know what spirits and ghosts are. That's different. But you don't want to bring the wrong thing home because it can destroy your life. It could kill you. It can hurt your family. It could kill your kids, your, your, your loved ones, your animals. It could destroy your whole life. And I've seen it happen because it happened to me. Years ago, I got involved in a lot of stuff and it messed up my life. And it wasn't rapes and ghosts. It was demonic. And it ruined my life for a, uh, for a long time. But that's another story for another show. And that's where I know this stuff can destroy your life. It can attack your family, attack my ex-wife. It tried to attack my kid. It attacked my friends. It, it, it came after me. It wanted me to hate everybody and destroy everything in my way. So trust me, I know it can come after your family and it can come after your life and it can get into your whole being and it never goes away. You can't, just like they show on TV on the exorcist, oh, you know, they, they, they do this exorcism, the demon goes away, it doesn't always go away, it comes back even stronger, and you'll never get out of it. You might think you will, but you'll, it'll come back one day. It just waits for its opportunity, and it will come back, trust me. Those are my words. You can think I'm crazy, or you can sit on your couch and say whatever you want to say, I don't care. I deal with it all the time, and it's not fun. It's an unpleasant life to live sometimes. And please understand, when we tell you this, it is not out of jealousy, okay? I hope and I pray sincerely that every single one of you that wants to be involved in the paranormal is extremely successful in whatever you do. Anybody in the paranormal that has dealt with me can tell you I want success for all of you. And I will absolutely support you in any way possible. I have done so with Shadow's Pit, and I have done so with other paranormal groups as well, and different people in the field. I'm, uh, I'm behind you 100%, guys. My concern here is simply with safety. When you have people that go out that don't have the knowledge, they're not prepared, that's how people get hurt, and that's how people get killed. And that's what we're trying to avoid here. Because... There are a lot of people that don't believe in most of the things we talk about every week. And I can't say honestly that I blame all of you. Because if you're a person that doesn't believe any of this stuff exists, that means that you have not personally encountered any of it in your life. And I say, thank God for that. I'm happy for you that you've never had to deal with this stuff. For both of us, life hasn't been that way, though. You know, we've dealt with this stuff our entire life. 
when I was in high school, we used to ride around all the time because that's what we did back in those days. Hell, I'm an old guy, you know. So back then, you didn't have internet and all that kind of stuff like you have now. So you would just ride around and try to pick up chicks. Basically, that's what you would do. Because chicks back then were the absolute best entertainment possible. And if you ask me, probably still today, they are the best entertainment possible. But that's what we would do back then. And one night we were riding around and this creature come out the woods. And the local legend called it the jackal. That's what it was called. But when I saw this thing come out of the woods and start running across this field towards us, what it looked like to me was a gigantic, it was about eight or nine feet tall. It was pure white, and it looked like a werewolf, is what it looked like. It was running on, on two legs, it was very muscular, and it looked like a werewolf. And this thing ran and dove up and landed on top of my car, and was trying to hold on. As soon as he jumped on my car, I started swerving around trying to knock this thing off. My buddy, the guy who does our theme song actually, was in the passenger seat with me. This thing slid down the top of my car, dug its claws into the top, and, and ripped long gouges in the top of my roof. Ended up hanging from the very back of my car, looking in the back window. My buddy John, who the guy that does the theme song, turned around and looked this thing right in the eye. And he let out the highest pitched scream I have ever heard another man let out. The thing lost its grip, fell down out the window, had the bumper for a minute or two, and then fell off that as well, rolled, ran back off into the woods. Now this all happened in the span of maybe a minute. That from the time it started running out to the time it was running back towards the woods again. But it seemed like it took forever to us. Now, I kept driving like a bat out of hell. Because I wanted to be as far away from whatever the hell that was as I possibly could be. When we got back to the place where we were staying, I actually stopped the car and got out and looked at the car. It was the first time I had seen the car since the attack happened. And I saw the gouges in the roof, and I saw there on the bumper, there was actually some fur and some blood that had lodged itself there. Now, I wish to God that I would have thought to actually collect that and save it. Because that would be proof that whatever this thing was existed. But I was a dumb teenager at the time, and I was just kind of freaked out, honestly, about the entire situation of what had happened. And I knew... That no matter what happened, nobody was ever going to believe that this actually happened to me. So, the reason I tell you that story is to, to illustrate that we have dealt with these things most of our lives. So, to us, we absolutely know that they're real. But to people that have never seen or had to deal with it, they don't know that as well. So, I don't always blame you. But I do appreciate the fact that you're here now listening. Now, whether you believe that the wraith exists or whether you don't believe it exists, that is entirely up to you to decide, as always. I have presented you with the lore, and we have presented you with first-hand accounts. So it's up to you to make that decision. But we are almost out of time, so I'm going to throw it back over to Old Boy to do his final shout-outs. And thank you, brother. And just remember, we, we, we're always trying to do tell you about these creatures or things we'll give you about 20 30 minutes and then we'll try to tell you what not to do with them sometimes and what to deal with them and how and i know people ain't going to believe this but these things exist and if you don't believe it then i you know that's fine that's your your opinion you're welcome to it but i i love you guys anyway it doesn't matter and remember if you want to listen to our old shows just go to james hersey's uh, youtube page Click and you know you, you can listen to all our old shows and everything. Thirty-four countries, one-year anniversary on Parax, guys. We've been on it for over a year, so I wanted to let that know. I'm gonna do a contest, and I'll be on in a couple of days to tell you what I'm gonna give away. It'll be cool. If you want to buy merchandise, I'll tell you where to go. Also, check out Shadows Pit. That's the group we're uh, affiliated with, uh, Paranormal Group. Check them out. He'll tell you where to go on that too. And I love you guys. Thank you. To the bottom of my heart, Miss Fit Sugar Ladies and, and Demon Hunters, I love you. Blessed be. Have a great night. All the links real quick. The YouTube page is youtube.com slash James Hershey Jr. 
The merchandise store is teespring.com slash stores with an S on the end slash staring into the abyss. Shadows Pit Paranormal, their site is shadowspit.org, I believe it is. And thank you guys for all the support that you give us. Thank you for listening. The magical thing about this show is that all kinds of different people listen to it. Not all the people that listen believe in what we talk about all the time. Hell, some of them might listen just to laugh at us because we believe the stuff we believe. That's fine. I appreciate you listening either way. And I hope that even if you don't always agree with what we say on this show, that at least you learn something while you're here. And hopefully, if we've done our job correctly, then you learn something and you're entertained at the same time. But I appreciate your listening. I appreciate all the love and support you guys give us. And until we speak to you again, love many, trust few, and do harm to none. God loves you, and so do we. Bye-bye.